Hello and welcome back to another Classic WoW video. Today we will cover some secret gold making methods, or at least some more hidden and less known about gold making methods, and ways to farm gold in Classic WoW. If you want to know about these farms before I make videos on them, make sure you join my Discord server which is linked in the description, as I share my gold making methods there first so people can take advantage of them before everyone knows about them. There's not much to say about these secret farms before we talk about each one specifically, so let's just get into it. Number one is the elemental pools in Ashara. This one is very very profitable and will remain profitable as long as essence of water is expensive. Basically you run around Ashara and look for these elemental pools. To fish in them successfully you need to have a as high fishing skill as possible, so anything you can do to increase your fishing skill will help you here. Pop consumables and increase your fishing skill and fish up the pools. Once you find a pool, pop your consumables and fish up that pool, and if you have time left on your consumables that increases fishing, fish up some nearby fish as well instead of looking for a new pool. Once your fishing skill buff run or buffs run out, look for the next pool and repeat. You get roughly 1 essence of water per pool or 1.2 or something, and the average essences you get per hour is 4 to 5 depending on how many pools you can find. A friend of mine have gotten up to 10 per hour, so yeah. And it depends on the server popularity, farm popularity, and a few other factors like layer popularity, layer jumping, and how known this gold making method is. Now we have gotten news that layering will be reduced and has been reduced on very many servers so far. Some servers are already down to only one layer per server and others only have two or three. So layer jumping and layer popularity should not be an issue anymore. Number two is the treasure map in Tanaris. This requires you looting 3 fragments from the pirates and combining the fragment into the treasure map. Locating the treasure map will unlock the next step which is to kill a mob and loot a key, then using that key to unlock the treasure which will contain 2 green items at around level 40. If you hit the jackpot and get 2 two-handed weapons you can get 5 to 8 gold from the one treasure chest. You can also get items with certain stats like frozen wrath that increases frost spell damage, or you might get some insanely crazy attack power or heal power stats as well, making it worth auctioning for a lot more gold than in Vendors 4. This can be a very good gold farm if you're a mage and can AoE farm the pirates for the fragments, or if you have a mage friend doing it who's willing to give you the fragments. If you are a mage you can also kill the pirates for step 2 for the key, in one big AoE pull and loot one of them, get your chest, to loot another key, get another chest, loot another key and just do that on repeat. Basically being a mage is really good for this secret gold making method and it is basically also not influenced by auction house price, as most of the steady gold you'll make is from vendoring the greens you get from this chest, but you also have the chance of obtaining auctionable items. A side note here is that some of the green items might be worth disenchanting, but check out the price for enchanting materials on your server before disenchanting. Number 3 is Ghost Mushroom Farming in Maraudan. This is a really this is really good because it is instanced and ghost mushroom is one of those herbs always in demand in classic, and one of those that are always very difficult to farm. Because this farm is instanced, there is also no competition of farming these and very little RNG involved. There is basically always between 6 and 9 ghost mushrooms each run of Maraudan if you do the full run. You can enter from the purple or orange side and run to the opposite side. If you're level 60, you can also skip every single mob in here, and if you're hunter or druid, you can take advantage of movement speed increase to significantly boost your effectiveness. If you hit the dungeon reset cap, which is 5 per hour, you can spend some extra time killing turtles in the dungeon, as they have a really good loot table. You can also kill certain bosses if you can solo them, since boss loot vendors really well, and will help add to your gold per hour from this farm. To check how much you can make per hour, search up ghost mushroom on your auction house and multiply that by 35. Since your average amount of ghost mushrooms per hour should be around 35, and you got your estimated gold per hour right there. On my server the ghost mushrooms are 1 gold each, so for me that's 35 gold per hour. Additionally, if you hit the dungeon reset cap, you can make more gold per hour from doing what I just said, kill turtles and kill bosses. Next up we have Twink items in Shadowfang Keep. 
This one isn't that secret, but a lot of people are in fact new to Classic and might not know exactly which items to look for, where they can drop, and why they're worth so much, so I'll break it down for you right here. Shadowfang Keep is also an extremely easy dungeon to solo, especially if you're high level, since Shadowfang Keep is a level 20-ish dungeon. So in Shadowfang Keep there are two main items you're looking for, both of which are really expensive on most servers. They're called Shadowfang and Assassin's Blade. They're expensive because every level 19 rogue twink wants at least one of each of these, and rogue twinks are extremely good in the level 19 bracket because of these weapons and their unique ability to one-shot people with correct gear and correct enchants. Shadowfang and Assassin's Blade can also only drop from mobs in Shadowfang Keep, and since you can only do 5 runs per hour due to the instance lockout, these aren't really farmed too much. However, let's say they sell for 500 gold each, which is actually what they're selling for on my server right now, and I expect in phase 2 or phase 3 they will sell for a lot more as long as they don't get over farmed. If the price is 500 gold and you spend 20 hours before getting one, that still means you're making 25 gold per hour on an average, which is a pretty decent gold farm if you ask me. You have to remember you can also get a ton of other items, greens, boss loot you can vendor, other blue world drops, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can get that will help increase your steady gold per hour as well. So if you can stand doing the same dungeon over and over again and farm mobs and you want some decent gold per hour, I would definitely recommend Shadowfang Keep, as there's no competition there, it's a dungeon, and it's just very easy. Next up we have the elite blue dragons in Winter Spring. Over here we are taking advantage of a hunter quest and they need an item called the mature blue dragon sinew to obtain the best possible quiver in the entirety of classic. And that mature blue dragon sinew happens to drop off of these mobs. Basically this can drop off of elite Asher dragons including Asher ghost which is the big elite dragon. These mobs over here have a drop rate of approximately 0.1%, so you might have to be here for a while, but this quiver is the absolute best one out there with a whipping 18 slots and 15% ranged attack speed. It is best in slot for hunters all throughout Classic, including Phase 6, so any hunters that are remotely into optimization should want this item, meaning that the item should always be on high demand and right now on my server it's selling for 350 gold each. Number 6 is the elite demons in the southern part of Winter Spring. Over here there are a couple of items that can make up your gold per hour like fell cloth which sells really well, rune cloth which is always needed, demonic runes which you can vendor, and lots of greens and other vendor items as well. Basically any set here in demon drop. But you also have the chance of obtaining the eye of shadow which is used by priests to obtain the benediction staff. Just to put it out there this has a really low drop rate but it's also worth a ton. Let's say it takes you 20 hours to get one, but you can sell it for 400 gold, which I think is a fair price for it. That equates to 20 gold per hour only from that item. You also get other items and pure silver drop as well, which more than makes up for another 20 gold per hour and even more than that. If you get one eye of shadow every 20 hours, you can get roughly 40 to 50 gold per hour in estimate. However, as you can see from my footage here, this is a really tough farm to solo, however it can be done, you just need a tiny bit more skill and a bit more gear than I have. However, you can also bring a friend since there are tons of demons down here and being two people doesn't hurt, since you will kill mobs more than twice as fast depending on buff synergy and how your classes complement each other and plus being two people means you kill faster than if you were one person, makes sense. So, if you ask me, I would do this farm as two people, and it also helps the security in case of world PvP. You can withstand more people from the enemy faction and fight for your own grinding spots. It is however not a very popular farm, at least not on my server, and I play on Firemaw, one of the most popular servers, so that kind of speaks to how hidden this farm is from the public. As a final honourable mentions in this video, I'd also like to mention Golden Pearl Farming. Although it's not so much a secret item to farm for, there are some hidden farms you can do like go inside Maraudon and kill the turtles there so you don't have competition for the mobs, but in general these will drop from clams that drop from water mobs like naga, turtles and murlocs in the level range of 40 to 50. Golden pearls are used for many crafts like spell power enchant and different epic gear crafts like truth faith vestments. 
Golden pearls right now are 8 gold each on my server, and if you find a somewhat decent spot, you should be able to net 5 of them on an average per hour. I usually just farm them when I go do my ghost mushrooms runs in Marauden and spend some more time inside Marauden so I don't hit the dungeon reset cap per hour, and I usually get 1 golden pearl per hour which helps add value to that exact farm. Since I did mention elemental fishing at the beginning of this video, I'd also like to say that you can bring in some insane amount of gold per hour by doing herbalism, especially in some zones. Obviously having control over black lotus respawns will be the best gold per hour, but running around gathering regular herbs can be great as well. I managed to get 55 gold per hour in my herb farming route in Ishara with a 60% mount, so just imagine doing that with a 100% mount. This is mostly due to massive amounts of Dreamfoil in Ashara, and Dreamfoils have now hit 1 gold each on my server, and after an hour of farming here I had 2 stacks, so 40 gold of only Dreamfoil. Additionally I got a ton of other herbs as well. For more herbalism, farming routes and tips go check out my two videos that I have made earlier covering herbalism in Classic WoW, and I also have another one coming up very soon. But just know it's a great profession to have, but it might require you to either be on a dead server or to be online at the middle of the night to have a zone for yourself. So there we have it, some secrets or at least more hidden and less known about gold farms in Classic WoW. This video has taken me a long time to make, simply because I wanted to make a ton of other videos before I made this one, and I had to make sure my facts were right on this one. I am completely aware that some of these farms have already been covered by other YouTubers, but most of them seem to cover only one farm per video, and I like to make one video with as many farms in one place as possible, to provide one video with lots of information, instead of just talking about one single farm for 10 minutes. It's also a 15 year old game at this point, so none of these gold farms are really that secret anymore, but hey, they're very good gold farms. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe you even found out about a new gold farm or two. If you did in fact like this video, please take the time to slap a like on it, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. And with that being said, I thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.